welcome back to good morning tobago right here on tobago updates we are back with more conversation and as the topic continues regarding the tobago uh house of assembly reshuffle and governance here on the island of tobago i'm gonna have a quick conversation with mr barrington skippy thomas and he will be joining us virtually good morning and how are you hi good morning i'm good thank you are you hearing me clearly i can hear you absolutely clearly how are uh, you doing i'm good i'm good thank you my dear it's nice to see you so uh i know that you may have been paying attention to everything that's unfolding here in the political arena as well as within this administration here on the island of tobago and we see that a reshuffle uh took place on monday uh mostly among assistant secretaries with one secretary um being shifted to the Division of Infrastructure as an assistant secretary and one assistant secretary being promoted to the office of secretary in the Division of Community Development. Have you been paying attention and what comments yes. do you have on this? Yes, I've been paying attention to it. I could say this, sir, that that whole exercise was really one of pernickety. And it was um, really, really nonsensical. I mean, the more you twist your head to try to understand what it was about, no real rationale could come from it. Because it would seem to me that if there ought to be a meaningful reshuffle, then it's the secretaries that have to be reshuffled, not the inconsequential assistant secretaries. And in the case of Mr. Baines, um, there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that, I mean, I think Baines is a, good person, a decent man, but he was a non-performer as a community development um, secretary. I mean, I don't know of any community development achievement since he was there, and community development is a very low-hanging fruit. But um, to replace a former senator, to replace a former government senator to add, um, a uh, person who was part of a national government, and I only raise that with the view that surely, and he was also an advisor to the Minister of Justice. So I'm ra I raise those issues and those references to Baines in regard that he would have, well, ought to have a vast amount of governance experience. And to replace him with um, a more inexperienced person then that is really not an issue about the competence that I have complained out about Mr. Bates. I still maintain I don't think he was a performer. I think he was an incompetent secretary. But to replace him with a more experienced person, then that reeks more of internal rift and politics and not necessarily performance. Okay, and uh, we saw that this was a long-awaited reshuffle. Uh, since 2022, the chief secretary announced it and in 2024 we are seeing it happening now but instead of coming to the public by means of a press conference we saw a press release do you have any um comments on why you think a press release was done as opposed to actually coming before the public and doing a press conference and answering questions and giving that rationale behind the decision as attorney martin george before you would have suggested because the press conference would allow for that um inter-party interrogation of the decision in other words the press conference would allow for questions and probing and more interrogation on the decision and the press release of course um would prevent the inter the immediate and in-person interrogation of the decision and allow for what is taking place here speculation over the decision interesting and, uh, but when we look then, at the over and then, and then sorry and then for doing that then there's no doubt in my mind that there's something a bit more, not necessarily sinister, but there's some ulterior motive behind all of this uh, But can you nonsense. truly say there's an ulterior motive when this has been planned since 2022? Well, as I said, the ulterior motive does, doesn't necessarily have to be sinister. I just, I just think that it's a case of uh, monkey see monkey do i just think it's a case of um the petty management of power so eric williams had reshuffle chambers had reshuffle 
Pandy had a reshuffle, Manning had a reshuffle, Kamala had a reshuffle, so I would have a reshuffle too. I think that is really what it was. It's just a petty exercise of power. Okay. And when we look at the governance structure of Tobago uh, currently, do you think that such a restructure can effectively assist this administration with uh, having a better strategy towards governance? The restructure, well, the new configuration. Correct. Well, absolutely, absolutely not, because all you have really reshuffled uh, the non-executive person who are not the policymaker, they have no direct um, control and management and so over their division. So absolutely not. Nothing positive could come from that. I mean, I must admit, and this is no um this is no um attack or uh, no difference to Sonny Craig. I think Sonny Craig is a good and decent boy. But I mean if anything positive would come from this, it seemed to me it would be um what is her name? Morrison, Megan Morrison. Yeah. In um in Health. the social the social welfare aspect of yes. it. I mean I have high hopes for her performing well in the social welfare aspect and that may be a positive flow from all of this, but I don't expect anything else. Yes, so Assemblyman Megan Morris, she has been sent to be the Assistant Secretary over there at the Division of Health, Wellness and Social Protection, with special, special responsibility for social support programs. And as you say, we do wish her all the best. Now, one of the appointments that was quite interesting is the appointment, as you would have briefly mentioned, of... Mr. Sonny Craig as Assistant Secretary in the Office of the Chief Secretary. And his uh, specific responsibilities, energy transition and carbon sequestration. Um, uh, we haven't heard about this in Tobago before in regards to it happening at a divisional level. Um, what ideas do you think the Chief Secretary might have in how he wants to accelerate uh, this area? under the office of the chief secretary and being able to use Sonny Craig to do so? That is an imaginary position. That is not a real position. That, that position, that position <laughs> is a nonsense position. I know that is, that is a fiction of Mr. Augustine mine. And I wish Sonny Craig the best in navigating himself through that imaginary function. That position reminds me of a position we had at the student guild on campus and that well that position was um we put all the you know we put the friend we you know we lobby for friends in some of the more um influential roles and then we had one where we normally put somebody you want to just give a position because he's a friend but you don't expect much from them and that position on campus was called the chairman of the swimming pool committee so Sonny Craig's position remind me of the um, U.E.'s Guild uh, chairman of the swimming pool committee. It's an imaginary position. That is not a real position. It means nothing. Absolutely nothing will be done. Um, Sonny Craig would be twiddling thumbs, achieving nothing over an imaginary role. And we saw uh, Councillor Sertica Williams being moved out of the office of the Chief Secretary and she's now functioning as Assistant Secretary in the Division of Finance with specific responsibility for reorganizing the THA structures, the HR structures of the division as um, in the Department of Trade as well as General Public Service Management and we know that she was doing HR management at the Office of the Chief Secretary. Do you think that we can see some improvement and some acceleration in the development of these departments under the Division of Finance with her moving there now? Well, I'm very happy you have asked me that question and my short answer to that question would be yes. And because there is no doubt about um, was a Miss Williams or or Williams Sertica so Williams, Williams. Or, yes. there is no doubt about her competence in that regard. In fact, I could tell you this. Uh, but you, I mean, I won't sworn to secrecy when he told me. James Lambert, the president of the NUGFW Union and the president of NATO, told me at Piaco Airport. From since Sertica were in the public service with Ochoi. She has always been a very formidable 
negotiator and manager of the public service. And just like him, I expect her to do well in that role. And there's no doubt in my mind about that. So maybe that is another positive to look, look forward to. But I don't know if she had to be... Well, I guess I imagine why. I think the Chief Secretary said he would relinquish the, the part, Division of Finance and she were in the office of the Chief Secretary. So, yeah, maybe... Yeah, so maybe there is some good, very um, rewarding things to expect from that appointment because she is a professional. She's extremely competent at those matters. And my thoughts are, if that is the case, why not make her the secretary? The secretary for finance? Yes, and those matters. Her specialty is in HR. So you are saying that she should have been appointed to the secretary of finance? You do know that call members... Um, specialty is really civil engineering, eh? So, but, but that aside, I'm saying that. Why not make her the secretary? She has the political acumen. Um, the, 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 the secretaries and ministers of finance, they don't actually engage in the crunching of the numbers and keeping the, the machinery going, you know. They are there to provide leadership over the administration's policy. And if she has the political acumen, she has the experience in HR matters and public service matter, management matters and so on. Then, if he has to use the pool of resources he has there, then, I mean, I don't know. I don't, the other thing too, if there's a secretary with her, I don't know for serious issues like restructuring and um, rebranding HR issues and public service management and so on. I don't know how serious the technocrats will take an assistant secretary. But that, that type of yeah, that type of task would come must come with the forte and impetus of being secretary. Understood. And when we look at how Tobago's economy has been developing over the term of this administration, uh, if you have been paying attention to that, uh, have you seen a significant improvement and what are some of the areas that you think should be focused on? Well, if I should use, um, if I should use, I was trying to remember the term for it, you know, not, not, not scientific data but you know there's a way there's a term they use for data notwithstanding it's not scientific it can still be relied upon just the term have escaped me empirical evidence if i should use empirical evidence then it would seem to me after listening to the business communities in tobago and being there on my own and um based on my own observation observation sorry the tobago's economy is in a dump it's in a rut and i take note that a number of those persons complaining have given a timeline from when their financial and economic decline began and they are aligning it with the start of this valley augustine led administration those are not my words. Those are conversations in every business quarter from parlor to parlor to factory. All right. And thank you for your perspectives there, Mr. Barrington yeah. Skippy Thomas. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you soon again. Guys, we're going to take You're a quick welcome. break and Have be back day. right after this. Let's go, guys. It's a brand new morning. Rise up. To a brand new 